Hey, and welcome to Stone & Sons Workshop. Today I wanna to give you a shop tour, a 2017 edition shop tour. There's a link down in the description for our last shop tour, which was 2016, and we've made a few changes since then. So if you wanna go back and watch that and then come back and watch this one, it might give you some ideas to take back to your shop, to implement, to gain some much needed space. So that's one of the things that we did in this shop tour. We've taken out some walls and moved out some shop furniture that we didn't need and it just opened up the shop. So I'm really excited about how this layout is. And so let's start over here on this north wall and then we'll just work our way back around to where we are here. So let's get started. Okay, so to give you a little bit of an idea of where we are, the clamp rack that you're looking at and the sticker door that you see, that's where I was standing doing the intro to this shop tour. And so that little build out is a bathroom. It's about three feet away from the wall and it's about four to five feet uh, wide or long there. And it does not go all the way to the ceiling. And that was intentional because I knew I wanted some type of storage above it. Well, I built a, Jay and I collaborated on a air cleaner to fit that specific spot. I'll link the video in the description down below for that collaboration if you're interested. And between that air cleaner and the wall is just some room for some miscellaneous storage. Uh, I'm storing some light bulbs in that area right now. So if I pan over to the left a little bit, um, there you see uh, a split unit air conditioner heat unit. Uh, so that is a new addition to the shop uh, and I'm very much enjoying that addition. So we've got some shelving over here as well, close to the ceiling. I did have some blanks in that area, uh, but right now it's, it's clean. And so that is some storage for whatever I want to use it for. So let me, show you what's in this corner. So if I'm looking at the bathroom area and to the left of that, this is what used to be a little finishing area. And then I also had my lathe there at one time. I think that was the, in the last shop tour, but here I'm calling this a, a, a prep area, a kitchenette, if you will. Um, but I've got a sink there. I've got a hot water heater down below the sink. And then also there above the sink, I've got some organization bins holding some different things. Uh, also have the, um, an old cheese ball container where I've got shop rags and that sort of thing. I just cut a hole in the bottom of that container where I can dispense different, uh, right now I've got some, some legitimate shop rags in there. I've got some old socks and that kind of thing in there. So I've got some shop rags in the sink that I will wash and reuse and then uh, put them back into the container and reuse those. And so over on the left-hand side uh, in, a, in a corner, I've got a metal cabinet, which has all of my finishing supplies, my stains, my paints, and everything else that is considered uh, a finish or a paint I store in that cabinet. And so right above that cabinet sitting on top, that is just a little mini fridge um, just for the shop. And so I've got some room here on the wall below the window and over to the left for some different things. So I've got some room to expand in uh, storage and organization. Okay, so let me reposition and then we'll look at the north side. Okay, so looking at the north side of the shop, this is the north wall and the refrigerator and metal cabinet that you see on the far right hand side of the screen. I just covered that uh, in the previous scene. So working right to left, uh, I've got just a miscellaneous storage there. Uh, this little area here, I'm not quite sure what this is gonna be. Uh, that's some leftover things that I had from the previous uh, shop layout. And so um, it's just filling a spot. So I could use that below the window for something else. So to the left of that, I've got a uh, cabinet that stores some things to keep dust off of and some other things in the shop that I need, like um, if I need to use Windex for sharpening or I've got some uh, plastic bags or some different type cloths and just miscellaneous shop stuff. So this is a uh, pretty large cabinet and really the only place that this cabinet will fit in this shop layout. So right below the cabinet, I've got a six inch jointer and this is a craftsman uh, old school type jointer. And 
right now I don't have any dust collection hooked up to this. My idea on the joiner in this particular location is if I have a quick board to joint, there's a bucket there below, uh, but if I need to joint a lot, it does have casters on it. I can wheel it out and hook it up to the dust collector that you see on the left-hand side of the screen. So that is uh, pretty much a, the best spot for that jointer because it is the same, the height of the jointer is uh, right below that cabinet. So it fits real well in that location. So moving on to the left a little bit is a 13-inch uh, Craftsman planer. And so it's on a... Uh, cantilever cart that's got some arms on it uh, that I use for different wood storage, um, just miscellaneous woods, cutoffs, and, that's, and that kind of thing. And so I've got casters on that as well, and it hooks up to that dust collector when it's in use. And so moving on down to the left a little bit more, I've got uh, squares and levels and that kind of thing uh, attached to the wall, a shop vac pushed up against the wall out of the way. Uh, and then all the way down by the garage door is a 10 inch turn crafter commander lathe. Now this is a variable speed lathe. Uh, I previously had a Harbor Freight unit that was just a, um, a, it was a 14 inch, just you had to move the pulleys and that kind of thing. And all of the tool rest and the tailstock and everything, you had to move and use a wrench to tighten and loosen everything. It was a good starter lathe, uh, but yeah, I've since got rid of that lathe and I've upgraded to the lathe here. And so I'm, I'm really liking that. Now the cart that it's sitting on came from Jay's. I'm using this as a test run to see what kind of cart that I want. Uh, but in reality, this cart is really working out well. I like the height, the length of it. It's got a lot of storage in it. And so um, I've got a lot of my chucks and jaws and that kind of thing in the drawer below the lathe. And then over in the other drawer, um, I've got some different tools. And below all of that is just some random wood storage. Now, right above the lathe, I've got um, a lot of pen, pen turning supplies, finished supplies, sandpapers, and that kind of thing. And then on the wall, I've got a couple or a three of the carbide turning tools and um, an extra face shield. And so when I have classes here in the shop for students, uh, we can uh, turn a pin or, you know, we can turn a mallet or whatever we feel like doing. This is the setup that I was looking for because with the casters on the cart, I can wheel that out next to the garage door if it's a nice day, open the garage door and make a mess there close to where I can just sweep it out. Uh, also, I can wheel it out and uh, put my back to the garage door and have the camera right above the lathe or, you know, where I can watch the students turn. So this setup is really working out real well. I'm, I'm pleased with it. And then above all of this, I've got a lumber rack. Uh, I did have three rungs of lumber storage. I took out the lowest one because this is the area where my miter saw uh, table was and I can since have condensed that into a rolling cart and we'll get to that in just a second But I took out the lower rung of the lumber lumber rack and I'm just using the top two rungs and so far that's all I need uh, but this wall is Usually that all of these tools the jointer the planer and the lathe all use the dust collection there on the wall that you see and um, And so that's working out so far that's working out real well. Okay, so let's move, up, move on along and let's shoot the uh, south end of the shop. Okay, so we're looking at the south end of the shop. So we just covered the, the north wall and so this is the opposite side of the shop. And so this is the uh, end of my house. This side of the shop is connected to, it's actually connected to a uh, two car carport and the carport is basically a carport that you can drive all the way through uh, so it's not an enclosed garage but the wall that you're looking at the brick wall just on the other side is a storage room and a stairwell going to the attic so it's not connected directly to the house which is a good thing in my opinion so immediately to the right right here this is the door that i come into the shop every day 
and then right behind the door there is the uh, electrical panel. And so this is the uh, main area where all of the electrical comes out of the attic down into that, into that mini wall. So the wood panel that is screwed to the studs right above that electrical panel, I can remove it with four screws and I can see all of my wiring and I can access um, the attic from that location if I want to add um, different outlets or if I want to add some lines or whatever. So it's really easy to get to the electrical here. Uh, and this is on a sub panel from my main house uh, electrical. Okay, so working from right to left, just on the other side of this wall is the dust collector. I've got the Harbor Freight two horsepower dust collector unit. Uh, and then I've also got a 55 gallon drum there working as a separator. And so that's working out real well. Now in the previous setup, I had a lot more dust collection runs. And so since I've taken uh, some out and the dust collection has improved. So on the north wall that we talked about, I've got a separate dust collector over there that I hook up as I use tools. Here I've got the table saw, router, downdraft table, bandsaw, and drill press all hooked up to this one dust collector. And so immediately to the left of that, you see a rolling cart that the miter saw is connected to. And so the miter saw has a couple of wings that, uh, that is attached to the miter saw that just kind of slide out to give some support. Uh, and so I can wheel this uh, over outside or over to the door. Uh, I've got a shop vac uh, permanently hooked up to this. The shop vac is there below the cart. And so, so far that's working out and for my situation. So here's the cart that the miter saw is sitting on. I wanted to give you a closer look because I wanted to show you a couple of things that went into planning for this little space. So like I said, I've got the dust collector and the separator here. Uh, I hung a ladder on the wall, but I hung it up high enough. And just if you can see this, I've hung it up high enough to where the cart that the miter saw is sitting on slides just right up under the leg. And then also the miter saw does not interfere with the dust collector. And so it's a nice little fit. And then also, if I'm feeding something on the bandsaw, it does not mess with a miter saw wing. So you can see the miter saw there, but in this particular location where the fence is, I can feed something all the way through and it will not interfere with where the miter saw is. So that's just a little bit of planning, you know, trying to figure out what space is, um, you know, just right for different pieces of furniture. I do have a plan for this uh, cart on the website. Um, so it's been, it's been a really good addition to the shop and I can see that I might need to use this particular setup uh, for other tools as well. So uh, just to the left of that is the Grizzly um, bandsaw. It is the, let me get you the number on it because I don't remember it, uh, the 555 LANV. The ANV is the anniversary edition. And so it's a uh, 14 inch bandsaw. I've got the uh, riser block on this bandsaw. So it has, it allows me to have a full 12 inches of resaw capacity. And so I'm loving, I'm loving that bandsaw set up so far. Uh, and just to the left of that, I've got a, uh, I've got an old bench top drill press. And so this drill press is, is, is really just um, to drill basic holes and that kind of thing. It does not have the power to um, drill through like any metal or, or that, that kind of thing. I actually don't have a, a key for this one. So I have to use a couple of uh, pipe wrenches to loosen and tighten the chuck on this deal. I've tried several uh, keys, I've, I've ordered several, and just I can't find one to actually fit it. So uh, this is this will be another upgrade in the future. So moving on down the wall, we've got uh, a wall that I previously had uh, French cleats, and if you look just to the right of this tool wall you can see some of those French cleats sticking out 
Um, and so since I've added fence panels and just to kind of give it a rustic look. And so I've got all of my just basic tools that need to be easily, you know, accessible, just hanging there on this. And so I've got a, a, a place for a lot of screwdrivers, wrenches, um, pliers, hammers, mallets, um, fish tape for when the dust collection system gets stopped up, I can use that to, you know, fish out the pipes, uh, saws, um, drill bits, just bang around chisels and stuff like that. Uh, so in the drill press area, I've got uh, a little, uh, I guess it's like a sorting cabinet where I've got a lot of different screws and nuts and bolts and washers and just miscellaneous stuff. Uh, and that's basically all that's on that wall, all the way down on the end. I'll cover that in just a minute, but that is the drill charging station. Uh, below this cabinet, I've got uh, there on the left under the cabinet there is just some bags that I use like uh, where I store my drills and my, my drill bit cases and that kind of thing on the go. I'll throw them in that bag and, and take them if I need to go somewhere. Uh, in the center of this bench is a um, leg vise that Jay made and he came over and we did a collaboration on, him, on the installation of this. But he made the entire thing. He made the leg, the chop, the, the hub, the handle, and all of that. And so this was the most uh, sturdiest place in the shop at the time. And so this was an area on, this is, this is a regular two by four plywood workbench, the very first thing that was made in the shop. And so that is a very solid point on that workbench. And so there's a leg connected to the, to the whole workbench down to the concrete and anchored to the brick wall. And so it was very, very solid. And so that was obviously the best place for this uh, leg vise. And so I use that quite a bit and I'm very, very pleased with it. Moving on down to the right a little bit up under the bench. This is where I store uh, my kids' uh, toolboxes and their little shop aprons. And so this, this is a good idea to store these at a level that the kids can come in, you know, grab their apron, throw it on and, and get their toolbox out and just go to work or play, you know, like they're working. Uh, so that's a really good place for them because it's easily accessible. They don't have to ask me to get something for them. They have their tools in their toolbox and there's their shop apron. And so it really works out. And so just to the right of that, I've got a couple of different cases that I don't get the tools out that often, like the Craig jig or um, there's a socket set in there, some deep well sockets um, and some masonry bits and that kind of thing. So I just grab those cases. I've got them tilted up on the side to where I can just grab the handle and pull them out. So that works out good. I've got a couple of uh, an old metal cabinet with some slide outs there that you see by the bandsaw. And in those little areas, I keep um, like coping saw blades or my hole saws or in different files or different drill bits. Uh, so just a lot of different things that go along with the drilling station. And so that kind of corresponds with, you know, the drill press and the things that are right above it. Okay, so we're looking at the east side of the shop. And so we just covered the, the south end, which you can see all of that on the right-hand side of the screen. So starting in the corner down there, this is the drill charging station. Uh, that I built and there is a plan for this as well over on the website uh, So it's got a couple of dust-free bins. They're on top with plexiglass and I keep my uh, Respirator my hearing protection eye protection and one of them um, it is big enough to put a 15 inch laptop in there if you needed to uh, do a lot of Work in the shop and then you wanted to protect your laptop. There is a place for that uh, right below that is a shelf for you know different screws, brad nails, and that kind of thing. And then at the very bottom, there's enough room to store uh, four drills and four or five air tools. And so uh, if you're interested in that, you can check that out. There is a video on this um, over on my, or here on my main channel. I'll link that video down in the description for you. So right above all of that, I've got a, a, a shop radio um, and a smart TV to where I can um, have different things 
playing in the shop. I can play YouTube videos um, if I've got a class going on and um, I want to refer to a video or something. I can pull it up on this TV, and so uh, you know, it just serves different purposes. And there behind the TV, on top of the radio, that's where I house all of my uh, like Apple TV, Roku, and um, internet router. So that's where all of the network stuff is. And so down below all of this, I created myself a little workstation, a desk, if you will. Uh, and all I did was just took a piece of, uh, it's like MDF with a piece of melamine on top. It's just a really slick countertop type surface. Uh, and so I created uh, a desk by connecting some iron pipe legs and floor flanges to that, just two of them, and then put a cleat on the back wall with a two by four and just screwed the desk or the, the desktop to it uh, with two legs on the front. And so it's just, it's a really simple, uh, really simple desk and it's nice and bright and it's wide so I, I can, it hold my laptop, a, a desk lamp, a microphone, a little a place for some notebooks. Um, and then also I've got a window there above the desk uh, to let in some natural light. And then just to the left of that, I've got wood storage. Okay, so looking at the, there's the desk that I just mentioned. And so I've got some wood storage here next to the bathroom that I've previously talked about. And it's, it's about four, um, I've got enough room for about five to six sheets of plywood. And so all I've done is just lean them up against this wall and created this little stop with some two by fours on the ceiling so they don't tip out away from the wall. And so that, uh, those things, those little things you see coming off the ceiling will prevent the full sheets of plywood from tipping. And then also the smaller pieces that I've got down here, um, the desk will stop that. And then uh, even smaller pieces, the leg of the desk will stop those from falling all the way over. So, so far this is working out real well. If you, have not watched the other shop tour from 2016, you can see that I went from a uh, full sheet, sheet good storage system to this, and this is working out just as well, and I gained a lot of space uh, in the process. Okay, so in the, in the background, you can see the garage door and the door that I come in every day to the shop. That is the west side of the wall, uh, and so, when I come in, there's the table saw and my outfit assembly table right in the center of the shop. And so I've got plenty of walk, walk space. I've got probably six feet of walk space from the band saw to the table saw. And then that, that continues all the way down to where I'm standing by the desk. And so I also have a nice walk area between the bathroom and the outfit table. And on the other side, I've got about five feet uh, of walk space between the joiner and planer and the outfit table. And about four to five feet from the garage door to the table saw. So I've got a good amount of walk space all the way around. But so the, what we're looking at here is a Delta 36-725 uh, table saw that came from Lowe's. Uh, so it's been working out real well for me. I've got a little cabinet up under one of the wings for table saw storage uh, for different table saw accessories, my dado blade, uh, some different jigs. Uh, everything that I use for the table saw is in that little cabinet. And so there is a uh, free plan for that on the website. So let's, let me give you a little walk around and show you a little closer uh, the table saw. So this is the, the Delta table saw, like I said. I did take the dust collection off the back, uh, the little two inch port. I took it off. Um, so right now there's just a piece of cardboard and tape that is blocking that off. And uh, that improved my dust collection. But what I did, um, I've got a daily vlog over on my second channel where I cover this, but I've got a dust hood mounted up underneath 
with a blast gate there up under the table saw. And so that really helps with dust collection on this particular table saw. Like I said, check the videos out over on my second channel where I do daily uploads and I cover, uh, I cover the, the way that's set up in one of those videos. So here is the, the little cabinet that I mentioned. I've got a place where I store my jigs to the left of the cabinet, um, just under the wing I, where I hold different accessories that I use for the table saw. And then a cabinet where I've got some table saw accessories. They're really accessible while I'm at the table saw. Now the outfit assembly table um, has been uh, a new addition to the shop uh, for a little while now. And so uh, this is working out really, really good in the shop. This is the single most used space in my shop. And so this uh, outfit assembly table is uh, it holds a, it's got a lot of storage in it, but it's also where my downdraft table is, where my router lift is, um, which is J Bates design uh, router lift. And so with this outfit assembly table, I've got built in dust collection. I've got um, two drawers on each side. I've got two cubbies on this side that you're looking at. And then also I've got six uh, or six to eight cubbies on the other side. And then here on the side where the router table is, or the router lift, you can see I've got storage up underneath for like a crosscut sled, um, a tapering jig, and also a router jig that I've got up, stored up under the, on the bottom shelf of this outfit table. And so I've got my router bits there. I've got um, the on off switch for my router lift and different places for different accessories to hang. On top, we've got a tool tray that holds different things that I will use at the table saw and here at the uh, outfit assembly table. So it just holds um, commonly used tools there. And so we've got an, a downdraft area here. And so uh, when the dust collection is turned on, the blast gate can be opened up right here at the outfeed table. And that blast gate is right here. So it's just right there under the um, downdraft table. I've got a tray here where I've got uh, straight edges and pins and markers and, and that kind of thing uh, stored there easily accessible. We've got a couple of cubbies here where I store my sanders and that's a good place to store those because of the downdraft area and I've got a couple of drawers. Uh, these drawers hold a lot of sanding equipment, belts, pads, um, sanding packs and then also I've got another drawer where I've got some jig equipment, uh, my Dremel, and some different sanding uh, accessories and templates and that kind of thing. So that's that's one side of the table. Uh, there is an outlet here. Um, there's one here and on the other side over there. So on this side of the table, we've got uh, the router. I've got a couple of uh, T-tracks in place for the router fence and a miter track for different accessories like the feather board. So the router fence will connect with a couple of T-bolts and stars uh, into those tracks and I can, I can tighten it down wherever I need to along that. But this is the router lift. Focus a little bit. And so I can change out the insert for that. And then I can secure my router fence. And then this is great, great dust collection. And so for the dust collection, the 
blast gate is right up under the router and it's got built-in dust collection there. Uh, this is where I store my router bits. I've installed a safety switch for the router. So when this is on, uh, the breaker's on, this router, uh, all of this works straight here, straight from the table. And like I said, I've got different things stored on the bottom shelf. I've got some parts for tool totes that I do with the kids. Um, my router sled, I mean my table saw sled, uh, a tapering jig, and also a router sled over there. And then I've got some different accessories here hanging on the side of the cabinet. So that is the router side. of the table. Now I'll move around. On the corner here I've got a, a vise, just a six inch woodworking vise and dog holes drilled along the table. And I store the dog holes right inside here with just holes drilled into the side of that shelf. And so I can just reach in, grab my dog holes, and use them as I need to. And so in these drawers, I've got all of my hand tools, uh, chisels, uh, handsaw, some different things, squares. And then in the drawer below that is where I store my hand planes and sharpening stones and that sort of thing. And there are six cubbies over here where I keep my hand-held power tools. Got a couple of routers in there, uh, sawzall, jigsaw, uh, worm saw, circular saw, and I've got a bench top uh, grinder there on, mounted on a piece of plywood that I can pull out and clamp to the tabletop. So it stores real nice in there. And so this, this whole table is like 40, is 48 inches here. And it's the length of the table saw here. So I've got a four foot uh, out feed there. I've got plans for this table over on the website. Uh, you can buy the plans for just the table but we also have, Jay and I have a bundled plan uh, together where you get his router lift plan and my outfeed assembly table plan. Uh, that is listed on the website as a bundle. Uh, and with both, if you buy the plan just for the table or the bundle with the router lift, you get the router fence plan for free in both of those. So if you're interested in that, check that out. Okay, so that takes care of the center of the shop. Okay, so one last thing I wanna to touch on is the lighting here in the shop. So I've got nine foot ceilings and I've got six four foot fluorescent fixtures and they all plug up to outlets. And I've got them on two different switches. So I've got three runs of two fixtures. So one switch turns on the outside, the two outside runs, and then the other switch turns on the center run. So that way I can play around with the lighting when I do videos, or if I need to work on one section of the lights, I can turn off that section and still have lights here in the shop. So I've got some options. So that's something to think about in your shop as well. So that is the shop tour for 2017. Like I said, if you have not seen 2016 to see the change, it's linked down in, in the description. I'll also link the description for the videos that I mentioned in the tour. All the plans that I mentioned will be linked down below. Uh, check out our website at stoneandsons.net and also I want, want to encourage you to check out our second channel where I do daily uploads Monday through Friday and just talk about what's going on in the shop, behind the scenes stuff. If I've got a new tool, I'll unbox it there. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in, please check out the second channel and subscribe over there. Here on the main channel where we do uh, these shop tours probably once or twice a year, uh, but also where we do project videos, we'll do tilt tool reviews, and some other things that are coming up. So be sure to subscribe here so you don't miss anything here on the main channel as well. Check us out over on Instagram. We're really active over there. 
And so we'll post a lot of pictures of what we're doing here in the shop and outside of the shop too. So uh, follow us over on Instagram at Stone and Sons Workshop. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time.